the Levites. This is the account of the family of Aaron and Moses at the time of the Lord talked with Moses on Mount Sinai. The names of the sons of Aaron were Nedab, the firstborn, and Abihu, Eliezer, and Ithamar. These were the names of Aaron's sons, the anointed priests, who were ordained to serve as priests. Nadab and Abihu, however, fell dead before the Lord when they made an offering with unauthorized fire before him in the desert of Sinai. They had, they had no sons, so only Eleazar and Ithamar served as priests during the lifetime of their father Aaron. The Lord said to Moses, Bring the tribe of Levi and present them to Aaron, the priest, to assist in him. They are to perform duties for him and for the whole community of the tent of meeting by doing the work of the tabernacle. They are to take care of all the furnishings of the tent of meeting, fulfilling the obligations of the Israelites by doing the work of the tabernacle. Give the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They are the Israelites who are to be given wholly to him. Appointed, point Aaron and his sons to serve as priests. Anyone else who approaches the sanctuary must be put to death. I'll hold this little book. Oh, you have Mark in the page? Okay. The Lord also said to Moses, I have taken the Levites from the among the Israelites in place of the first male offspring of every Israelite woman. The Levite are mine, for all the firstborn are mine. When I struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, I set apart for myself every firstborn in Israel, whether male, man or animal. They are to be mine. I am the Lord. The Lord said to Moses in the desert of Sinai, Count the Levites by their families and clans. Count every male a month old or more. So Moses counted them as he was commanded by the word of the Lord. These were the names of the sons of Levi, Gishon, Karbah, and Manahai. These were the sons of Gishonite clan, of the Gishonite clan, Libni and Simai, the Kohuthite clan, Amram, Ezar, Hebron, and Uzel, the son of Merorite clan, Milpi, Mushi. These were the Levite clans according to their families. To Gershon belonged the clans of the Libanites, the Shimanites. These were the Gershonites clans. The number of all the nails a month old or more who were counted were 7,500. And the Gershonite clans were to camp on the west, behind the tabernacle. The leader of the families of the Gershonite was Elishaphat, son of Lael. At the tent of meeting, the Gershonites were responsible for the care of the tabernacle and tent and its coverings, the curtains, at the entrance of the tent of meeting, the curtains of the courtyard and the curtains of the entrance to the courtyard, surrounding the tabernacle and altar and the robes and everything related to their use. So they took a group of people out of each clan to make them a Levite? Is that what they did? No, just these were the sons of, of uh, from Aaron, their descendants. It was just oh, Levites. Oh, okay, because they're talking about all these clans. Yeah, but they, okay, uh, my dad has a whole bunch of kids. So there's Ed's clan, Frank's oh, clan, okay, Arlene, okay. And my clan, Ron's clan, Arlene doesn't count. So Ed's clan, Frank's clan, my clan, and that's how they're divided. Oh, I see, okay. To Kahath belongs the clan of the Amramites, Azarites, Hebronites, and Uzalites. These were the Kahathite clan. The number of all the males a month old or more were 8,600. The Kuthites the Kuh, uh, were responsible for care of the sanctuary. The Kuthites clans were to camp in the south side of the tabernacle. The leader of the family of the Kuthites clans were Elizaphon, son of Uzal. Son of Uzal. Okay. Right there. They were responsible for the care of the ark, the table, the lamps. Stand. And the altar, the articles of the sanctuary used in ministering, the curtains, and everything related to their use. The chief leader of the Levites was Eliezer, son of Aaron. The priest, he was appointed over those who were responsible for the care of the sanctuary. To Merari belonged the clan of the Melites and the Mushites. Mushites. <laughs> they were the Merarite clan. The number of all the males in the month old or more who were counted was 6,200. The leaders of the family of the Merarite clan was 
of Zerel, son of Abihail, they were to camp on the north side of the tabernacle. The Merarites were appointed to take care of the frames of the tabernacle, its crossbars, posts, bases, all its equipment, and everything related to their use, as well as to the posts of the surrounding courtyard for their bases, tent poles, and ropes. Moses and Aaron and his sons were to camp to the east of the tabernacle towards the sunrise in front of the tent of meeting. They were responsible for the care of the sanctuary on behalf of the Israelites. Everyone else was to approach the sanctuary was to be put to death. Anyone else? If anyone else. Not everyone. The total number of Levites counted at the Lord's command by Moses and Aaron according to their clans, including every male a month old or more, was 22,000. So add another... 100,000 to that, there are women and children, right. and you got even more. Yeah. The Lord said to Moses, Count all the firstborn Israelite males who are a month old or more, and make a list of their names. Take the Levites from me in place of all the firstborns of the Israelites, and the livestock of the Levites in place of all the firstborns of the livestock of the Israelites. I am the Lord. So Moses count all the firstborn of the Israelites as the Lord commanded him. The total number of firstborn males a month old or more Listed by name was 22,273. The Lord also said to Moses, Take the Levites in place of all the firstborn of Israel, and the Levites stock of the, and the livestock of the Levites in place of their livestock. The Levites are to be mine, I am the Lord, to redeem the 273 firstborn Israelites who exceed the number of the Levites, collect five shekels from each one, according to the sanctuary shekel, which weighs 20 gerath. Give the money of the redemption of the additional Israelites to Aaron and his sons. So Moses collected the redemptive money from those who exceeded the number redeemed <coughs> by the Levites. From the firstborn of the Israelites, he collected silver weighing 1,365 shekels, according to the sanctuary shekel. Moses gave the redemption money to Aaron and his sons, as he was commanded by the word of the Lord. Right. Well, we got a lot of research. This is the Bible reading, not a Bible study, but there's so much stuff here that we don't understand. It would be really good to do this as a Bible study. It would take years. It would take years for us. If we were Hebrew, no. it might be easy. <laughs> it would be nice if we got some response I know. from you listeners out there. Are there any Israelites If you have Hebrews insight into these things, we yes. certainly appreciate it. Right. Yeah. Another time, we're talking about Jesus now, another time he went into the synagogue and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. So they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Isn't that interesting? If Jesus is going to heal this man because this man needs healing, and these guys don't look at it like, wow, this is wonderful that this man is healed. They're trying to see if, how they can accuse Jesus. Maybe they consider healing at work. Jesus said to the man with a shriveled hand, Stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked him, Which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? It? But they remained silent. I know a man with a shriveled hand who should have been there and got healed. Um, and he's a doctor. And silent. Where did you stop? Right there. Right there. He looked around at them in anger and, and deeply distressed at their stubborn heart, and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out, and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with Heter Herodians how they might kill Jesus. Crowds, Crowds followed, followed Jesus. Jesus. Verse 7. Jesus withdrew with his disciples to the lake, and a large crowd from Galilee followed. When they heard all he was doing, many people came to him from Judah, Jerusalem, Idumea and the regions across the Jordan and around Tyre and Sidon. Because of the crowd, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him, to keep the people from crowding him, for he had healed many, so that those with diseases were pushing forward to touch him. Whenever the evil spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God! But he gave them strict orders not to tell who he was. The appointing of the twelve apostles. Jesus went up on a mountain side and called to him those he wanted, and, he came, and they came to him. He appointed twelve and designated them apostles, that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach and have authority to drive out demons. 
These are the twelve he appointed, Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. To them he gave the name Boanerges, which means son of thunder. Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphesius, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Is that the three parts you're supposed to read? Jesus and Belzebub. Okay. Then Jesus entered a house, and again a crowd gathered, so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him, for they said, He is out of his mind. I wonder why he's out of his mind. Because he wasn't eating, I guess. Oh, I don't yeah. know. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, He is possessed by Belzebub, by the prince of demons. He is driving out demons. So Jesus called them and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. In fact, no one can enter a strong man's house and carry off the possessions unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can rob his house. I tell you the truth, all the sins and blasphemies of man will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. He is guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they were saying he had an evil spirit. Jesus' mother and brothers. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Who are my mother and my brothers, he said. He asked. Then he looked at those seated in a circle around him and said, These are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. That's the end. That's the end of it. You know, when you're talking about healing, it says in prophecy and in the New Testament that uh, people are going to come and claim to be God and do signs. Do you remember in Egypt, the people who weren't uh, Moses also had the, the ability to do Pharaoh's amazing uh, things, right? Yeah. Make snakes and so forth. So maybe based on that history, they were thinking he was coming and, and doing these signs, not under the influence of God. Well, it is one absolute gorgeous day, and that's the reading for today. So I'll so, let you pray that. Awesome God, we praise and thank you. I look out to the window here and I see sunshine, beautiful bright sunshine on the crisp cold snow. Even though it's minus 11 degrees Celsius out there with the wind chill, the strong wind blowing much colder, it is absolutely a beautiful day. It just brings joy in my heart just to be alive and to experience this. And I thank you for this. And I pray, Lord, that wherever we are today, that we, your children, will experience your presence in all your creation around about us. We ask, Lord, for healing of those people that need healing. We ask, Lord, that you meet the needs of people that need have needs this day. And we praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, I'd like to add to that prayer that I thank you for the peace that you've given me in my heart, knowing you yes. and loving you and seeking you and having you express yourself to me in many ways. I ask, ask, also thank you for the peace in our home. This is a house filled with love and we thank you for that. And the peace in our family. We have a large family and, and they love you and love each other. And Lord, the peace in our community. And I'm so sad when I read the paper with all the war and rumors of war and uprising and riots and, and natural disasters and social disasters and political disasters. And even in the middle of all that, I'm like in Psalms 91, you promise where all this is happening around us, we can be still and know peace because you protect us. And I thank you, Lord, so much for allowing me to enter into your presence and experience that peace. May all who watch these videos and study along also experience that peace. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Be blessed.